So this is a diamond nitrox that's come in for a couple of basic mods. Uh, um, the first time I've had a look at one of these amps, I really didn't know anything about them until uh, until Matt uh, Matt brought this around. Hey hey Matt, look it's um it's definitely a kind of a it's a metal amp right? It's really saturated, um, got really thick mid range in it. I haven't actually studied this amp from a uh, in detail from you know preamp. Uh, a schematic perspective, but really just kind of played it and uh, and got a sense of it from you know uh, having a bit of a, of a play around with the with the tone and uh, different sounds I could get from it. It's got a you know clean channel on channel one here, but I've, um, not surprisingly, being a metal amp, I think most players and certainly I have anyway too spent most of the time over here on channel two. Um, I do like to set up two games and two masters on the second channel. I've done this with a few of my own builds actually, and from a, from a few of my own uh, PCB designs, where you can set up two different channels. They call this the kind of 2.5 uh, channel amp because you know, two fully independent channels, and I think the 0.5 comes in from the fact that you can dial in, you know, a channel A here and a um, sorry, sorry, a gain and volume A and a gain and volume B on the second channel. Really handy for a live player. So you could have, you know, uh, the B side set up with you know, more, more gain and maybe a bit more volume for a, a, an on stage volume boost if um, you don't trust your sound guy or you're playing straight off the back of the stage with no, um, no one on the desk out front. Um, but you can hear from just the opening piece there when I was playing, it's um, pretty saturated amp definitely in the, in, the, in the metal side of things. This is a Charvel uh, Superstop Pro Mod San Dimas that um, is my newest guitar. This, um, this came to me uh, through the Head First Kelly uh, amp that was featured on uh, Brett Kingman's channel. Uh, by Brett. Hey Brett. And um, we kind of worked out a deal, a deal on the day and I, I went there with an amp and came home with this guitar. Um, I love it. It's it's killer 80s shred machine, right? It's a JB, uh, Samuel Duncan JB and the bridge here that we've been listening to. I might go through a few tones of this amp uh, with a Les Paul as well. I got a Les Paul with EMG pickups in it, uh, Zach Wild set. So, um, you know, pairing up a guitar that'll match this amp, uh, that's probably a good choice. To the mods, what I've actually done with this amp is pretty straightforward. I haven't touched the preamp or anything. What I've done is some mods in, in the power amp section. So uh, Matt was pretty keen to have variable depth added to the amp. Um, so in discussing that with him, I said, well, why don't, we, why don't we do variable depth and variable negative feedback? So what we'll add to the amp is a, a depth pot and a response pot which is exactly what we've done. It's on the rear of the amp. If you're interested in hanging around and listening to me talk about um, what the mod is and how to do it, um, what it does, some of the technical aspects of it, I'll finish off the video with um, a bit of description about that. So, you know, hopefully that information could be useful for you if, you, if you're inclined to, to, you know, make your own mods uh, to the amps that you've got or you're just genuinely interested in how some of this stuff works and uh, hopefully that explanation will um, uh, shed some light on some of these things. All right, guys. So basically what we're doing here is we're tapping 
straight off the uh, impedance selector. So with uh, you know, variable depth, variable negative feedback presence, they're all part of the negative feedback circuit in the amp, right? So they're kind of related to the power amp section of, uh, of your amplifier. So what I'm doing here is basically tapping off um, the impedance selector here into a variable depth, out of the variable depth pot, into the variable response, and from there it then goes into uh, the PCB of the amp. I will say, having opened this amp up and had a look at it, the build quality is excellent, quite impressive. So I've just I've got the amp set uh, the same as I had just in the in the clip that you, when I was playing this Les Paul here. I'll just play with these uh, the variable negative feedback here and the depth, and you'll get the idea of how much impact they have to the overall feel and tone of the amp. With the response control, when it's wound up like this, um, we have the uh, least amount of negative feedback going into the amp. Right? So um, that will make the amp brighter, more lively. Um, when we pull the response back, what we're actually doing is sending more negative feedback into the amp. That'll make the amp darker. Uh, and tighter and less less lively, um, but you'll get the idea. So we'll start we'll start with these in the, at uh, twelve o'clock, and we'll uh, I'll just go through them. circuit or vary the negative feedback circuit in the amp. Uh, I actually prefer it now because I can brighten up the amp a bit, get it a bit, um, I found it just a little bit dark and a bit too thick through the mid-range um, just for my own personal taste and I found that by you know reducing the amount of neg negative feedback in the amp by you know, cranking this response pot right up. Um, I was able to get you know kind of more lively kind of tones out of the sound. Bear in mind that the presence and the depth um, controls on your amp do respond to the amount of negative feedback you have going through, right? So in this position, where you have um, much more negative feedback going through the amp, and I'm sure you could hear it right, it really darkened up. Um, if you wanted to set your amp like that, it's going to be tight and dark. You would. You'd have to re EQ it a bit on the front, right? So you know you crank up your, your, your maybe your mids and your tri and your treble control, and maybe you know you crank up your presence potentially as well, almost certainly. Um, but bear in mind that when you have more negative feedback, the depth and the presence um, controls will have more impact. Okay. So for me, back to how I like to stop dial it in. I liked it with the um, you know much lower negative feedback. But consequently, because with a lot less negative feedback, the depth control doesn't have as much um, impact. I just cranked this all the way up, and I found they had a pretty pretty nice balance of um, you know lively and bright. Um, feels nice under the fingers, but 
uh, yeah, that bottom end kick is still in the end. <laughs> So here's just a quick hand-drawn schematic for uh, the mods that I've made, which are just in this section here, right, through the um, negative feedback line. So first thing I did was I moved the um, negative feedback tap to the 16 ohm um, uh, terminal on the impedance selector because it was actually set to the speaker jack, which means that depending on the cabinet that you have attached to the amp, the amount of negative feedback will actually change, which I find uh, some amp manufacturers still do this. I think it's a bit strange. Um, set it to the tap to the impedance selector, and you'll always get the same amount of negative feedback regardless of the cabinet that you're using. So we set that to the 16. The reason I put it on the 16 is because I want to have a, um, a more negative feedback coming into the amp, which I can then use the response pot to control. So if your amp is set to 4 ohm uh, negative feedback tap, it's less negative feedback coming through the amp. 8 is middle ground and 16 is more. Um, so let's look at the variable depth here. It's a 1 meg linear pot um, and I've got a 6.9 nanofarad cap and I've created this by putting a, a 4N7 and a 2N2 uh, in parallel to create 6, 6N9. Um, and this style of amp, I think this you know sets the frequency for the depth or the thump um, at nice low um, thumpy frequency. So the depth pot here is controlling how much of of this um, depth circuit is coming into play. Then we're into the response pot. Um, this is actually a 250k um, linear pot. I realise that I haven't written it on the um, on the diagram here. Apologies for that. It's 250k linear, um, and you can vary that from being completely out of circuit, so it's you know has no effect all the way through to the full 250k. This is the um, negative feedback resistor that's actually on the PCB, the stock one. It's 100k in the stock amp, and I've moved it down to 62. So using my response pot in combination with this fixed resistor, I can now go from um, you know, much less negative feedback than the, in the stock amp to, to much more and everything in between. The rest of this schematic here, I just drew, um, this is a stock, you know, um, Marshall style phase inverter um, setup. And I didn't actually trace this amp to this, but you know, I put money on the fact that it's identical. Um, all of these amps always are. So what you've got here, this is the phase inverter input, so your signal's coming through the preamp and it comes into the phase inverter this side. The negative feedback comes in on the other side of the phase inverter and this is how your negative feedback coming back from the speaker makes its way back into the amp. Um, all right, so moving on, we'll have a look at some pictures of the stock amp and then into how I actually implemented the mod. So you can see here, this blue wire uh, running off, off. Um, this is the impedance selector inside the amp. These are the two speaker jacks. And you can see this is the negative feedback line, this blue wire here. It's connected to the speaker jack. So depending on where you have your impedance selector, 16 ohm here, 4 ohm, uh, sorry, 16, 8 and 4, you'll get a different amount of negative feedback coming into the amp. And the blue wire makes its way to this side of the PCB here. Um, this is the fixed depth um, set up here. All right, so I'll show you how we make that variable. And then this is the 100K negative feedback resistor, which is also fixed, obviously. And then um, um, I'll show you how we make that variable as well with the response. So here's what I did, right? So these are the two new pots. Um, conveniently, there were two holes in the chassis uh, that were already set up. If I go back to this picture, you can see them. They had plastic plugs sitting in here. I think that this chassis was set up so you could have a, a line out. So this is perfectly sized for a pot and this is perfectly sized for a, um, 
you know, quarter inch jack. And given that it's right next to the impedance selector or the speaker jack, um, my guess is that this was set up so that you could uh, tap a signal off the speaker uh, and using a pot here, have a, um, a line out capability to slave the amp, you know, for a wet dry wet setup or, or what have you. So I pulled those plastic plugs out and put my two pots in here. So this is the one meg linear pot um, that's now giving us variable depth. And you can see I've got a 4N7 and a 2N2 cap wide and parallel up to the pot here. And I'm, um, the signal is reaching this pot via this orange, now this new orange wire. And this is a 16 ohm tap off the impedance selector here. Through the depth um, into this pot here, this is a 250K linear. Um, and this is our response. All right, so variable negative feedback. This is the blue wire that was already in the amp and using some heat shrink. And I've soldered this uh, orange wire here, which runs over to this lug here on the pot. Um, and that's now we've got variable depth, variable response, and it makes its way back to the PCB. All right, so here's the uh, the orange you know wire that I soldered and heat shrink onto the existing blue wire here that was the negative feedback line. So it comes down here onto the PCB, and you can see here it's actually labelled on the PCB as negative as feedback line. So that's cool. Um, I didn't change any of that. What I did was I pulled out. This was the depth circuit here. This there was a resistor here and this capacitor. Um, so simply by pulling that resistor out and linking it, this completely bypasses that cap. So um, it takes this fixed depth um, completely out of the circuit. So the negative feedback runs through this blue line across this link into this fixed um, negative feedback resistor, which I've moved down to 62K. This was 100K in here. And then from here, it goes into the stock amp. Um, so lowering this resistor here to 62 is giving me the ability to bring this uh, response pot here to control overall variable negative feedback and um, obviously on the outside of the amp you know um, I've labeled them appropriately right so off the uh, off the impedance selector here into the depth into the response and into the amp Okay, guys, well, I hope this is helpful um, and you might be able to use this information to not only mod one of these uh, diamond nitrox amps, but these principles can be applied to any tube amp that you've got that you want to um, implement variable depth and variable negative feedback.